Hello everyone. As you all know, we now have more access to internet and social media more than ever. And it's, it's amazing in this time where we're not able to see each other, so it's great for connecting. But it also has some negative aspects. And we're seeing more and more fake news and misinformation out there. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you and have a conversation about how this news actually spreads and what we can do to stop it. None of us share information knowing that it's false. We see some news either in our Facebook feed or WhatsApp or Instagram and we feel like we have to share it right away. Let's first look at how we are persuaded into believing if something is true or not and then we can look at how to spot misinformation or fake news. The great philosopher Aristotle said that there are three modes of persuasion. The first is logos or appealing to your logic and rational thinking. Now this is what most scientists use to communicate. They give hard facts and hard numbers and statistics so that they can explain the world they see. This sanitizer kills 99.9% .9 of all germs or this chocolate has 30% less sugar is all very effective in their messaging. But sometimes it's hard for us to relate to data points on a graph or statistics and it's hard for us to make any meaningful conclusions from them. When it says it has 30% less sugar, what does that mean? Is it more healthy? Does it seem like it's more healthy? What's the catch? So we look to someone with authority, someone we can trust, someone who's accomplished in a given field. Now this is called ethos, which appeals to authority and refers to experts in a subject. This is a very valued strategy in advertising. Often you'll see actors dressed up as doctors trying to sell you toothpaste or shampoo or anything else. And subconsciously this registers in our mind as something that is legitimate because there are actual doctors working on them, even though they're just actors. And when we go out to the grocery store, somehow we end up picking these products over others. It's a very effective strategy when used correctly. Finally, we come to pathos, an appeal to the emotions. Now, this is the strongest mode of persuasion and one that the scientists use the least because they're used to hard numbers. We are all emotional beings and the easiest way to get through to us is to make us have a strong reaction to something that saddens us or shocks us or make us feel compelled to share something right away. The images are usually heart-wrenching, starving children in Africa or homeless families in war-torn Syria or an abandoned dog that is hurt and looking for a new home. All of these are very effective at getting the message across and it makes us feel like we need to share it right away to do something and to contribute something to help these people who are helpless. Don't get me wrong, these are all very effective methods of communicating and it works great when the news or whatever you're reading is true and factual. But in today's world, there is so much misinformation and fake news out there that are using these same strategies to communicate false messages to us and to propagate their own agenda. So let's have a look at a few fake news articles that has been spreading and we look at how we can break it down. Eat or drink turmeric or gooseberries or ginger or garlic and it will help cure cancer or arthritis or headaches or even ear pain. This is the general messaging that we see and it's usually accompanied by the name of a doctor whose name sounds respectable and serious. If you google this doctor, usually they're not doctors at all or even worse, they are qualified, but they have been discredited by the scientific and medical community as people who are spreading conspiracy theories or misinformation or fake news. So the logos in this message is that they have high levels of vitamin C, immune boosting compounds, zinc, curcumin, etc. The ethos is the doctor title and whatever makes them sound legitimate. For pathos, this one is easy. Just have a picture of a person suffering from a disease and after having taken this said treatment, they've completely recovered. While having these immune boosting components in our diet over a long period of time, like 10 or 20 years, might have some benefit towards our health. It's very dangerous to spread this information as being a cure for something when there is no evidence for it. Because it gives people a false sense of hope that they're actually doing something to fight the disease that they have, when in reality, it's nothing but sugar pills. I understand the motivation to want to share this information. We feel like we're doing what we can to help overcome their disease. But in reality, we are making it worse because sometimes people go against medical advice to follow these natural remedies. Also, it's really insensitive if 
you think about it, to forward a message to someone who has just lost a relative to a particular disease and to tell them that if they had had cinnamon tea two times a day, they could have been cured of cancer. The next claim we're going to talk about is widespread. A lot of people think vaccines cause autism in children. So their logic was that when children were vaccinated against measles, mumps and rubella, some of those kids developed autism. Now this is a classic example of correlation does not equal causation. And scientists have shown that it's only a coincidence that children happen to exhibit autistic symptoms at the same age that they are generally given the vaccine for MMR and that there is no link between the two. The ethos? This paper was published in a very well-reputed journal by a Dr. Andrew Wakefield who was quite well known in his field at the time. And the papers, obviously this appeals to the emotions of every parent out there who wants the best for their child, who is scared to give them something that might cause something else. The study was largely criticized because it was badly done science. And this one study was responsible for parents all over the world not giving their kids the MMR vaccine. And this led to a lot of children developing measles and measles outbreaks throughout the world, which even led to some kids dying. Let me make this clear. Two decades later, there is no evidence that the MMR vaccine causes autism. I will definitely make another longer video addressing some of the sometimes honest concerns that parents have about these vaccinations and what effects it has on their children. But it's important for us to know that the scientists and the regulatory authorities are doing their best and doing everything they can to make these vaccines effective, safe and cheap. Now with the news that two of the several candidates for the COVID-19 vaccines are effective, we need to make sure that we are responsible and only share verified information so that we can make sure everybody gets vaccinated and we can put an end to this pandemic. Let's come to another seemingly non-harmful message like microwaves can cause cancer or can kill your food, whatever that means. These messages are usually accompanied by something like my friend's cousin's daughter who was 10 years old passed away because she ate microwave food for a month. There's absolutely nothing to back up these claims. Microwaves are safe and maybe even better at preserving nutrients because they cook the food really fast and they're very effective at cooking food. So here are some signs we can look out for when we spot fake news and what we can do about them. First, if it's too good to be true, it is. Generally, don't trust any messages that are full text. They usually change the fonts and make it bold or italic to make it more trusted, but it is still not true. They generally have no links or sources to any other news article. And this brings me to my next point. Check your source. See who has forwarded the message to you. Is this someone you trust? Or is this someone who usually forwards messages without thinking about them too much? I'm not blaming that person, but you don't have to fall for the same trap that they're falling into. Verify the information. Check to see if multiple news organizations are talking about the same news. There are several fact-checking websites like snopes.com and factcheck.org that I've linked below in the description that you can first verify the news before you spread it. Is the article talking about the death of a cousin's friend's daughter-in-law's sister? They're trying to confuse you by being vague. Don't fall for it and see if you can find some news source that's actually reporting the incident. It's important for us to know that most fake news is not fully fake. Nobody says microwaves make your hair pink. It's too far from reality and nobody's going to believe it. We all know microwaves emit radiation. That's how they heat the food. It's a fact. But this radiation does not escape the microwave and it does not harm us in any way. So the fake news around microwaves usually say that it makes the food cancerous or that it changes the quality of the water in some way that if we have it then it's going to cause several diseases. Check with someone else. Is there someone you trust who generally lets you know if you've shared something fake? They might be able to help you verify some of this information if you're not able to do it yourself. And there's nothing wrong in asking for help. We're just making sure that we're being more responsible. And finally, does it trigger you emotionally? This is the strategy most people who come up with fake news use to make sure that it's being spread and it becomes viral. Take a step back, think about your rational self. Maybe you won't feel like sharing that information after all. I really hope you found this information and this video useful. And if you have any other tips for spotting fake news or how to deal with it, 
I would love to hear from you in the comments below. And have you seen something recently that you're not able to figure out is fake or not? Why don't you post about it below and I'll have a conversation with you about it. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you like my content. This is Rukmini and I'll see you next time with more science and less talking. Bye-bye.